<laughs> Hello, my strong, strong friends. Today we're at a super exclusive private gym. Our friend George has a gym in Queens. And then one platform here. I'm gonna deadlift there, I think. And then Ryan's gonna do some weightlifting stuff over here on the other platform. Yeah, I'm gonna be right here all the workout. And this is George, the man with the plan. <laughs> I wanna make a video specifically because I've been getting a lot of questions. Actually, Caitlin McCandles, I think is her last name. She asked me what I do for mobility. P.S. I got my eyebrows embroidered, so if they look really crazy, the guys have no idea what they're talking about. I'm like, my eyebrows look too crazy to record a video. And Ryan said, no, they just look super on fleek. <laughs> That's what they say. That's what they say. Yeah. What they do is they put like ink on your brows. My goal is to never have to do makeup. So however much I can tattoo my face to make that possible, I will do that. Today, we're going to do lower body mobility. I have deadlifts and squats. So I'm going to show you like what I would do. Uh, there's going to be three parts of the video, but I want to give you a thorough overview of what you can do um, if you're putting together like your mobility routine maybe you can take parts from this maybe you can pick up things that you like comment below if there are other things that you like to incorporate and yeah this can be a resource for people looking to add more mobility get more mobility it's also not just mobility it's a full like lower body deadlift and squat pre-lift some activation work and kind of like all encompassing warm-ups and mobility drill. And what you want to do is you want to be mobilized so you're not feeling creaky and crunchy, but also you want to activate, for me specifically, I want to activate definitely my glutes when I'm squatting. I want to definitely open up my hips when I'm deadlifting, because I'm a sumo deadlifter, and then do some upper back warm-ups. There'll be a couple parts to this video. It'll be a kind of a mobility routine and like basic every day, something that I do every day I'll show you. I'll do a pre-squat mobility and activation routine, and then I'll do deadlift uh, specific. What are you doing today, Ryan? Snatch Clander. <laughs> George? Squats and snatch grip push press. Oh, sweet. And we're all gonna be mobilizing. We're gonna so. look like that by the end. And yeah, we're gonna look like our friend. <laughs> Arnold or Lou? Arnold. Look how sick, I told George this is how his back looks. That's how my back looks, am I right? Getting there. Getting there. Soon, stuff. fam. Soon. My back might not look like that, but my eyebrows look <laughs> tight. First, I'm gonna show you guys. This is like what I do every single day, right? This is pretty much it's a sun salutation, yoga flow. I do this. I try to do this every morning. There are a couple things in addition that I do just every day when I walk into the gym. Focusing on opening up my, well, stretching my Achilles, and then kind of getting 
my ankles warmed up, and I'll pedal my, pedal, walk my dog as they say. And then I'll push back and stretch my hamstring to get a good stretch there. And then depending on how good or bad this feels, I'll walk my hands back up to my forward fold, and then back down, down, down. So if you just want to get your hamstrings warmed up, get them stretched out. I like to do this in the morning. I'm usually feeling pretty shitty in the morning, so I do this every day. And then you want to start, continue your flow. Move to plank, and then do a push-up into up dog. Stretch your lower back and look up at the ceiling. Then stretch your neck if it feels good. And then you go back into down dog. And I'm full. I'm just doing whatever feels good, whatever I need to do. So now you're going to do a low lunge, I think this is called. So I'm going to put my foot up here and start opening up my hips. And my groin. Stretch my groin. So you want to get into your low lunge and move around. Just really stretch it. I'm not doing a yoga class right here. I just want to feel good. So then you can stand up and start to open up your hips a little bit more. And I like to stretch my side body. So I'm going to straighten this leg and stretch back. And then go back out. You're going to repeat with the other leg. So that's pretty much it for your yoga flow. Next thing, I'll take this band, but you can use a PVC pipe. And I'll just do some shoulder pass-throughs. I try to do 10 each way, 10 with my hands forward, and then turn it around. You start from the back. <laughs> with your palms forward. And then just try to open up your shoulders. Usually my shoulders feel really creepy. And then open up the side. My trusty stick. Oh yeah. <laughs> this is the only thing I'm allowed to wait with. <laughs> back with PVC. <laughs> you can see I still do this on my squat and deadlift day because usually I squat and my, I mean I still want my shoulders to be feeling fine and it just makes me feel good to open up my body and move my body. Ryan's my warm up demo but I also do this pretty much every morning on my back. Is it crunchy? Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Mobility Bro, walk? Yeah, yeah mobility walk supernova. Supernova. Supernova, so it's not as hard as a lacrosse ball. Uh, it's pretty firm. It's more just that it's bigger. Bigger. It spreads out your uh, contact point a little more. Okay, next, pretty much no matter what I do, and the reason they call me Meg Squats is because if you ever see me in real life, usually I'm in this position. <laughs> so I'm going to show you guys a toddler squat, which is, I call it, I feel like there's a better name for it than the lame ass toddler squat, in but. The, in the Philippines, we call it waiting for the bus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you ever see me at an expo, and I've been standing for like 12 hours, usually if I'm talking like in between talking to people, I'll be just hanging out here just to rest my legs. So I'm gonna show you guys. I do pretty much every day just to, again, open up my hips. I am pretty mobile, you can see, but since I'm prepping for sumo deadlifts first, I'll do this to open my hips because my feet will be wide and my hips need to be open. So you can do a toddler squat or wait for the bus. An Asian squat, right? Like that's what people we'll call it too. The slob squat, the slob squat. Well, well, BuzzFeed had that video like, can Americans do the Asian squat? And a lot of Americans couldn't. And I see some of my clients also struggle with this too. So you want to just keep your feet on the ground, keep your back strong. You want to hit below parallel. So your hip crease should be below your knees. And yeah, just open up your hips. You can move around a little bit in this position, but I like to make sure that people can get into this position before they start really putting any weight on the bar. So some of us lack the ankle mobility or even hip mobility to get into this position. One thing to note is make sure that your back is strong, not relaxed like this. Now, if you see me wait for the bus, I might be chilling like this because it's more comfortable, but when you're doing this, make sure your back is straight. Even, you don't want to be all the way sunk down. Probably going to hit depth right here, not down here. So yeah, just use this and then push your, you can push your knees out with your elbows. I can go out all the way over here. Some of us might be here, but push them out and yeah, sit in this. Usually I recommend 
people to do it if you're gonna do this and it's like your first time maybe do a couple sets like three to five sets for 10 seconds rest for another 20 and then go back down in the squat so if you're gonna be a power lifter take this shit seriously and make sure you have the mobility to do that I'm a low bar squatter I'm although low, low. today I'll be high bar squatting so it might make sense for me to open like make sure my ankles and my Achilles are feeling nice and good but just this little thing I feel like you could probably buy this for pretty cheap huh it's, I didn't think it'd be cheap. It's like 40 bucks or some shit. Oh, like damn. That. Well, cheaper. cheap enough. Cheap enough, yeah, yeah. For sure. So you can also stretch like against a wall with your, do you want to show them, babe? Foot up. Or just like on a plate. Or, or on a plate or something. something. You can do something like that. And then Ryan also has these voodoo bands on his ankles. What are those doing for you? CrossFit witchcraft. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> The idea of a voodoo band, correct me if I'm wrong, either of you two, is it constricts the blood flow in a certain area so that whenever you take it off, it feels really nice and you, all the blood rushes to that area because Ryan's taking it off now. They prevent rhabdo. They prevent rhabdo. This is not true. They it don't? Is, it is a very popular thing to do in like the CrossFit world. I think people definitely Overdo it. You can overdo it. Maybe even this video is overdoing it to be honest. <laughs> Find what works for you You don't have to buy into every single thing. Next I'm gonna start warming up with the barbell Just doing a few more hip openers, starting to squeeze my butt a little bit, feel my glutes, and then just continue opening up my hips when I get on the barbell. Also, I did a little bit of cat cow. Obviously, a deadlift is involves your back. You never actually want to be in cat or cow when you're pulling on the bar to open up and start waking up your shoulders and your back and your lats is very important. One thing that I do while I'm deadlifting is not actually lower body mobility or warm up, but it's pull ups. So I want to do pull ups so that I'm keeping my lats tight. If you notice me, I always try to tighten my lats by doing this. Everyone has their pre deadlift ritual. Usually it's so people set their shoulders and start turning on their lats. right after you're warming up so that you're not too close to pulling. Just do some pull-ups. And you can see I did a longer negative on the last one. Just three, that's all you need.
cannot get into that Chinese squat or toddler squat position that I taught you. You can use some assistance. So you can get into the position and just hold onto a squat rack or I don't know, your bed post or anything. And again, you're gonna get in the same position, but maybe if you need to pull on this, you can just to keep your balance. If you're struggling with some balance issues, or if you can't quite get into, like if you don't have the ankle mobility, maybe you are, your feet is back on your heels, or your weight is back on your heels. So uh, try to pull yourself forward so that um, you're keeping the pressure even on all four corners of your feet, uh, and try to get into the position for your spot rack. The mobility that I use and the activation work that I use for both deadlift and squat are pretty similar. Some things that I have done in the past that I like to do are just to open up the hip even more for squat. And I'll do a few swinging leg swings each way. You can open up this way. You can also hold the side. Usually helps if you have a loaded barbell just so that so there's some weight on it. And you can do toe touches and swing back. Again, you're just opening up your hips. As you can see, I'm pretty much a walking billboard for Slingshot right now. It is what it is, son. Uh, this video is not sponsored, but I'm a big fan of the hip circle. Um, this is, you can get this on howmuchbench.net. And this is great for some, now we're starting to do more activation work. If you're like me, your knees cave a little bit when you're uh, getting heavy enough on squats. So I really do try to prevent that as much as I can. So what we're going to do now is a hip circle walk. You, if you don't have a hip circle, you can also use smaller bands. I find that those tend to not have enough resistance. You're going to want to, I'm going to walk this foot. And two notes here. Make sure that you're maintaining tension with the hip circle the entire time. So don't take a step and then uh, don't lose that tension. You want to keep it tight. We're trying to activate our glutes here. People will also use the hip circle around their knees and squat with it. I think that's also beneficial. Wide your stances because this is quite a bit of tension. Maybe then you want to use one of the smaller bands. There are several different uh, hip circles that you can use and look at and see one that fits you. So one thing if you do struggle with getting into the toddler squat, you can put some weight on it. A lot of us, uh, especially bigger people, we don't have any weight pushing us down. It might be hard to get into that position. Yeah, so if you're having some mobility problems, any depth too, you can take a kettlebell or even a dumbbell if that's what you have, and you can use the weight to get into the squat position, and you can see it's front loaded, so you're forced to keep your back upright. Hit parallel, maybe hold it for a little bit, feel what that feels like. Just warm up with this, do a couple sets of five, sets of ten. If you're not training with a barbell yet, but want to, I mean, you can load that pretty heavy. There are kettlebells out there that go really heavy, all right, guys, I think that's it for our mobility video. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to Caitlin McCandles for the suggestion. Hope my eyebrows didn't scare you away. If you're new here, uh, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Usually I do look like a normal human.